I'm Becca and this is my story. I enjoy a lot of different things. I'm very outdoorsy. I love hiking and running. Um, done a couple ultra marathons, a bunch of marathons. Um, I love just being outside, um, canyoneering, climbing, um, riding my bike. I do some triathlons as well. I love to be amazed at what my body can do. And I am kind of like a go big or go home kind of personality. Um, I did my first marathon before I ever even did a half. I just was like, yeah, why not? Like, <laughs> I wanna see if I can do it. Um, and I did. And it was really, really hard, but I learned a lot. And I learned like what I was capable of doing. I grew up always being really active, growing up right on a national park in Washington. Um, as a family, we, we tried to be really active. And then through high school, I started doing a lot of sports. I was a three sport athlete. I ran cross country and track and I played basketball in the winter. Especially in high school, I had some of like our team captains on cross country and um, they really were strict about what we ate. And they tried to like enforce that a little bit. I remember like grabbing a bagel after a cross country meet one time. And they're like, you can't eat that, you'll gain weight. You gain weight and you'll be slow. Um, and like I would eat a pound of baby carrots for lunch. And that would be my lunch because then I would be eating the whole time the other people were eating and um, I could stay thin. And I remember seeing a magazine cover um, <laughs> with Tyra Banks on it. And I mean, she's like 5'11 and she's like 160 pounds is not fat. And I remember like looking at that and being like, no, that's like, that's so big. Which is funny because literally that's like what I weigh now. But <laughs> um, yeah, I was just so obsessed with like being thin and I was so scared of like eating. And it started to influence my running. Um, I started to be like, I was amenorrheic for over a year. Um, I ended up going to the doctor and the doctor's like, you need to gain weight or you're not gonna be able to have kids. You're going to like become infertile and your bone density is gonna be like terrible. Um, and I never was like, oh, I'm anorexic. Like I, I ate but I exercised so much um, that it was having a very negative toll on my body. For me, like having a doctor like sit me down and be like, you need to eat more or you will not be able to have children. Like I've always wanted to have kids. And so that was a big motivator for me. And then I also moved in the middle of high school, um, which for me was good to just get away from it. I was definitely not as competitive um, in cross country, particularly later. But for me, I was a lot healthier and I definitely gained some weight um, naturally, both with, you know, <laughs> as you hit that age and like your hips widen and everything, um, but also just trying to be, be cautious. And now I actually um, really try to be like an advocate of healthy eating and like being intuitive with your eating. And luckily I have the opportunity to work with like amazing dietitians and nutritionists now for part of my job um, and try to help people like establish those good eating, eating habits developing a good relationship with food. I am a fitness trainer. I have taught fitness classes for over five and a half years now and really try to help people live a healthy lifestyle. I also work in product development for a health and fitness company, working with our software development teams. So I manage a team of developers and uh, help people stay, stay healthy and fit. It's really comforting to know that like, when you are active on a daily basis, you won't ever let your physical activity or your shape um, stop you from doing anything that you want to do because you are in a space physically where you can do it and you're capable of doing it. I think love is just accepting you or other people like in however they come. Um, so like my body, like there's days where, you know, at the end of the day, I'm like, man, I look like I gained 10 pounds. I'm so bloated. Um, but it's like, no, like I still love my body. And I think for me, the biggest thing that's helped me with self-love of my body is being able um, to amaze myself with what my body is capable of, which is one of the reasons that I love doing like, ultra marathons and marathons and triathlons is like, it's hard to hate something that is so amazing. Being able to do things and being happy um, is a lot more important than like how many abs you can see. Like there's just a lot more things that are important in life. And I just think I'd wanna know that it really doesn't matter. And that people are gonna love you and people are gonna think that you're beautiful no matter what. Um, I remember being told in seventh grade that by the boy that I had a crush on, of course, um, that redheads were not attractive, that he was not attracted to redheads. 
and it like destroyed me. And from that moment, like I asked my mom, I was like, can I dye my hair? Can I dye my hair? Can I dye my hair? And she's like, no, it's beautiful. <laughs> and I was like, the only people that think it's beautiful are like the old ladies at the grocery store. <laughs> And as I've grown up, I've come to like really love my hair um, and it's something that makes me unique and it's something that makes me stand out and that's a good thing and not every single person has to like me or be attracted to me and that's okay. Um, and I think that is maybe like the most important realization I've had that I would definitely want my younger self to know is that like even if that one boy doesn't like redheads, like that doesn't mean that everybody doesn't and um, it's a unique feature that's defining to me and I should embrace that.